come a long way from anything. I didn't know the ocean could look so big. This is all that's left afloat of the white dragon. I'm either the luckiest person alive or the unluckiest person about to die a slow, horrible death. What the hell is that? Uh-oh, for some reason, the story of the bloodthirsty cannibal merman of the Sea of Song suddenly pops to mind. speak Arcadian? Guess not. Doesn't seem so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic up close, though, does it? Hi. Do you speak Arcadian? Guess not. Doesn't seem so bloodthirsty and cannibalistic up close, though, does it? Come over here and let me pet you. You're just like a seal, aren't you? Oh, bloody typical. I told her she didn't believe me. Girls always disappear on me. Always. It's a drawing of a man cutting his finger open and squeezing some blood into a bowl together with some green, mossy stuff. Then he mashes it together and... Oh, gross! He dips a black pearl in it and eats it. That's barbaric. Maybe the stories about the cannibal merman were true after all. But hey, in the next one, he seems capable of speaking fluently with the creatures that brought me here. I wouldn't mind that. Maybe it could get me the hell out of here. It's a drawing of a man, a human, sticking a strange polyp-shaped object into his mouth. Ugh! In the next drawing, he seems to be able to breathe underwater. Convenient, if somewhat radical. The walls look organic. And those blue things... I think they're polyps of some kind. They live inside the wall and are part of the structure. National Geographic would go nuts over stuff like this. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. These polyps must process the oxygen in the water somehow. That's how I'm able to breathe in here. Oh, this is so disgusting, but I have to get out of here. seashell. There's a large black pearl inside the seashell. The 
seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. It's a glowing green substance that's spread evenly across the walls, providing light and heat. It's a spear. A harpoon, I guess it's called in maritime terminology. Sorry. This gets infected, and I have to chew off my finger to fight the gangrene. I'm suing somebody. How things I do to save the world. Worlds. I've always had trouble swallowing pills, especially huge golden magical ones. Well. Here goes nothing. <laughs> Oof. It's a more person. God knows what sex it is, but I'm sure it's not the one that kidnapped me. That one had small or, or wings. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, we understand. Weird. I have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I shouldn't be able to understand what you're saying, but I do. You have passed the two tests of the Gatherer Landwalker. Breathing water and speaking the tongue of the Merum. You can serve us now. Serve you? You have been brought here to serve us as the gatherer of Tanyan. What's Tanyan? Tanyan is life. Tanyan brings light to darkness and sustenance to our caves. Tanyan keeps the snapjaw from our children and heats us when it is cold. Tanyan is life. Where does Tanyan come from? Our gatherers collect it from the caves and shores of the islands, but there is less Tanyan to be found each season, and we need help. How does Tanyan do all those things you said? Tanyan provides warmth and light. It draws the harvest close. Harvest? The creatures of the sea that we eat. The golden tail, and the weed eye, and the sand eater. Fish? You're talking about fish. The harvest, yes. That is what we said. The harvest is drawn to the light and to the heat. But the Snapjaw are clever. They stay away. They know the light allows us better aim with our spears. Why can't you gather Tanyan yourself? We do. But we cannot move far from our cities, or the Snapjaw will hunt us and eat us. If we travel in force, we leave our men and children without guard. And we cannot travel too close to the islands. Or the wing demons may catch eye of us. They leave our gatherers alone, though, so you have nothing to fear. 
Who are the wing demons? Ugly, leathery creatures who defy nature to fly up there in the sky. They are evil and live to destroy our people. Don't the Snapjaw kill the gatherers? Rarely. Your meat is bitter and tough, not soft and tender like ours. I won't ask how you know that. I think I've learned enough about Tan Yen for now. You have learned nothing, but your training will teach you what you need to know. I'd like to learn more about Tan Yen. Certainly. What do you wish to learn? Thanks. I don't have any more questions about Tan Yen. Are your people called the Miram? We are the Miram. Most landwalkers call us Mermen, or Mer people, but the Miram was our name in truth. Who are you, man? We are the queen of the third city of the Miram, enlightened keeper of the Tan Yen, protector of the light. I'm sorry, your... Your Majesty, I really had no idea you were a queen. We are just a queen. Our function is to serve the people, to light our cities, provide food for our men and children, and to protect them from the snapjaw that hunt us in the dark. Do you know where my ship went down? The vessel you foolishly travel in above the water? It rests not far from the city, just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble where you were first brought. I think it is dead. Where did you say I could find the shipwreck? Just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble. Do you know the island of Elias? Yes, we know the island of Elias. Our gatherers find Tanyan there, and the Miram once had a city in the shallow waters below it. Can you bring me there? Until your training is complete, you cannot go gathering. We cannot risk losing you to the Snapjaw, or to have you desert your duties to our people. How long will my training take? Six cold oceans. Six years? Sure, that makes sense. Everything in this world takes ages. I've been told that you worship an old god who lives in the deep. How did you come by this forbidden knowledge? it up on my way here. Could you take me to him? You? No. We cannot. Unless you are Miram, you are not even allowed to speak of our sleeping god. Thanks for your time. We will call on you soon to begin your service. Until then, you should stay inside the Landwalker's bubble and away from the dark waters where the Snapjaw lurk. It's a pretty blue crystal. Do you need this? No. It is of no value to us. Where did you find it? It looks very old. I believe one of the children found it just outside the city. Not far from the Landwalker's bubble among the seaweed by the rocks. We have used it for decoration in our home, but you are welcome to it. Consider it a gift, gatherer. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled, it looks almost deliberate. another one of those crystals buried in the sand among the seaweed. There's an entrance to a cave back here. Judging by the amount of seaweed, it's a long time since anybody's been in there.
This ring is inscribed with the image of a bird. This ring is inscribed with the image of a clay pot. This ring is inscribed with the image of a mirror. This ring is inscribed with the image of fire. This inscription looks like a fish. This inscription looks like a huge pyramidic structure with an eye in the middle. It's a long spear with hooks, probably a harpoon then. It's inscribed with the image of a wave, probably representing water. This ring is inscribed with the image of fire. It looks like some kind of visual history of the Marin people. this first tablet. Oh my god. It turns out the Marum came to Earth inside a type of spaceship from another planet. They're aliens? Not that anything should surprise me at this point, but still. They look very different back then, though. It must have been a long time ago. Their ship looks to have been a living thing, according to these drawings. Wait a minute. Could this be their ancient god? One of the dragons? I think it has to be. After they arrived on Earth, their species divided in two. One crawled into the sea, the other onto land. What does that mean? This must be a while later, because the Marum look like they do today. At least the ones who went into the sea do. The other ones? They have wings. If I'm going to guess, I'd say that the ones who went to live on land became the Alation, which means the Marum and Alation are related. In this one, they're living close to each other and in peace, and it seems they share equally in the production of Tan Yen, which attracts fish for both peoples to eat. Then something happens. War, it looks like, and the Marum and Alation move away from each other. In this last one, Tanyan is beginning to become scarce, and the Marum are losing many of their young ones to the Snapjaw. 
They fear the elation, and they forget their common heritage. At the very end, there's a prophecy. I think. The Merim and the elation joining hands once again. When they do, Tenyen becomes plentiful and both people prosper. It's a circular indentation framed with the image of two dragons biting each other's tails, almost exactly like the markings on my talisman. It's an indentation roughly the size of my talisman, framed with a familiar symbolism of the balance. For a minute. Yes, Gatherer. We may. Why was the cave with the altar and the wall painting just outside the city abandoned? What? Show us this cave. Immediately. I lit the cave by placing the crystal from your palace, together with three more crystals I found on the altar, and moving the stone rings into their correct positions. Can it be that you are... but you are a gatherer? You cannot be she. Who? Who can't I be? The water stiller. She who, by prophecy, will deliver us from strife and unite us as one people. She who will uncover the ancient shrine. Looks pretty ancient to me. This is the shrine, yes. And you have brought light to the darkness as well. But the other prophecies, you have not fulfilled them. You have not proven yourself to be the water stiller yet. How can I do that? Come back with us, and we will tell you. Is the water stiller? She is of the prophecies. She will bring an end to strife and unite our people. How can I prove that I'm the water stiller? You have uncovered the ancient shrine and brought light to the darkness. But this could be just chance. You must show us the witness you carry of your mission to the balance. The talisman! Damn, I lost it when the storm hit us! You must also kill a snapjaw with a spear, and then you will have proven yourself to us. Once you have done this, we will aid you in your quest to make us one people. Where do I begin? Take this spear and slaughter a snapjaw. This must be done to prove your strength, and to prove you are of the Merim. Where do I find the snapjaw? If you are the water stiller, you will find a way. It's a harpoon. dead. I killed it. I'll need something to bring back to prove that I killed the snapjaw. 
This tooth will do just fine. Oh, man, that's sharp. I had no idea Snapjaw had razor teeth. If I did, better not think about that now. It's my talisman. What incredible luck. It's a big seashell. small niche containing what appears to be a shard of a stone. It's a piece of the stone disc! No, wait. It's only one half of a piece. It looks like it's been divided in two. Strange. It's one half of one of the four pieces of the stone disc. I got this from the Temple Cave of the Merum. I've taken from you the object you've kept hidden for generations. It's part of the disk that will restore the balance and save the twin worlds from chaos. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the Water Stellar. Here's a tooth. From the dreaded Snapjaw that guarded the shipwreck, proof of my strength and courage. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the Water Stellar. Here's proof of my mission. A magical talisman with the sign of the balance. It means that I'm the 13th guardian of the balance. You have indeed fulfilled all but one of the prophecies. You might yet be the Water Stiller. We would not have thought she would come in our lifetime. Good. Then you'll take me to your sleeping god. There is but one more prophecy you must fulfill. There's more? Sure, there's always more. That's the fun part about prophecies. You must unite our people once again. But you said you were united, that there's no strife between Miram. The Water Stiller will come to bring our people together again, to unite us and save us. This has still not come to pass. Until you do so, the prophecies of the Water Stiller have not fully come to pass. I think I know now what the prophecies mean when they say your people will be reunited. The Miro are at peace with each other, yes? But you're not at peace with the Elation, the Wind Demons. They are our enemies. Right now they might be, but it wasn't always like that. Not according to the carvings in the Temple Cave. What do you mean? Once upon a time, long ago, the Miro and the Elation one people. What? This is heresy. I'm just telling you what I saw in your temple. This was a very long time ago, and the one species soon divided in two. One sought refuge in the sea, the other on the winds. But both the Miram and the Elation were dependent on the other for various reasons, amongst them Ten Yen, 
which was abundant where the two people lived in close proximity to each other. Apparently, there was peace between your two people for a very long time, but then something happened, something that caused a war to break out. Both the Elation and the Mirror moved far away from each other, and ever since then, your people have had a tough time finding Tan Yan. I think the only way to save the Mirror from a slow death and the elation as well, probably, is to reconcile you with your, uh, common ancestry. How can we believe you, Water Stiller? Your words are too outrageous, and the consequences for you to be speaking the truth are grave. If you don't believe me, check out the temple walls. The whole story has been recorded there, probably when you first came to this place. But what will our people say? What will they think when we tell them they are brothers and sisters to the winged demons? You're their queen, and so you'll have to make them understand and accept their heritage. As must the elation, I expect, and I don't think it will be any easier for them to come to terms with their history. You must go to them, then, to find if our temple speaks the truth, and if they are willing to speak with us like civilized people. I guess I must water stiller or not. If you don't reunite with them, you will die, eventually. We will bring you to the shores of their closest island, and we will await word from you on their answer. Does this mean you believe me? You are the water stiller. You are prophecy. We will follow your directions and fulfill our destiny. One of our people will bring you to Alais, a night's journey from here. Once there, you will find the elation and speak with their leaders. If they agree to meet, then we will do so in a place of your choosing. I promise I'll do my best. Goodbye. Safe journey, Water Stellar. We will hold on to the piece of the disk you found in the temple. If the winged demons, the elation, agree to meet us, we will bring the stone. get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. Debris from another capsized ship. These must be dangerous waters. There's a coil of rope among the debris. Shipwreck debris. the village of the giant crabs. Hey, that sounds like a great name for a B-movie. Village of the giant crabs. It's a big statue. Clear, unpolluted waters, overflowing with life. Just one more reason why Arcadia is both the vacationers and environmental activists' wet dream. Literally. It's some kind of giant crab. Sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. Yeah, the shell does look way too tight. Maybe he's outgrown it but can't shed it. Or whatever it's called. I'll just take a shot here and ask you. Is there any chance you speak, like, a real language? Like, um, Arcadian or English? Okay. Now, is there some kind of magic I have to learn, or potion I have to drink, or eat, or ingest in some way to learn your language? Because that's usually how it goes. No? Too bad, although I'm glad I don't have to draw blood or swallow a stone or something. Can't help but feel that you're asking me for help, though. It's the strangest thing. After all, you're just clicking your claws, aren't you? It's not as if you're really talking, is it? I 
can see clear to the bottom. This really is an excellent spot for fishing. It's an old fireplace. The bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large ears listening to something. The bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with the top half of the statue depicts a creature with a big mouth calling out. It's a creature with large ears. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. It's a creature with a big mouth. bottom half of the statue depicts a large eared creature listening intently. It's the ruins of an old city. Dense jungle. It's a huge volcanic mountain. It's a tiny tree. It's a deep hole, more like a crevice, actually, caused by some kind of seismic activity. God, it must be at least 50 meters down. The crevice widens out into a huge cave just below, and there's water at the bottom. Big nests, once housing the elation, but now empty and in disrepair. It's the remains of a stone structure that probably fell down here through the crevice. There's a piece amongst the rubble that looks like a bolt or a key. It's intact. It's a Marum City. April, you're alive! You're here! You're soaking wet! Where did you go? I thought you drowned. I was completely miserable! And the chicks on this island are so prissy. They don't even care for a kiss unless you're all settled down with a nest in your own territory. <laughs> Glad 
Good to see you haven't lost the gift of the gab, Crow. Lady, you have no idea how limited bird Twitter can be. It's all, hi, this, and here I am, that, all damn day long. I haven't had a decent conversation in days. Well, you're making up for it now. I never know when you're gonna go AWOL on me again. I had a little adventure under the sea. Oh? I didn't know humans had gills. We don't. Well, I do. I think. At least I can breathe underwater now. Cool. Not as cool as being able to fly, of course, but still. Hey, does that mean you're a mermaid? Hardly. I don't have a tail. What did you do after I saw you last? Well, it took a while, but I found land. Not this island, just a rock with a couple of trees, basically. But when I went back to tell you, you disappeared. I thought you'd gone bonkers from thirst and hunger and drown yourself or something, so I decided I'd better find solid ground myself or I'd suffer the same fate. And then I found this place. Nice, isn't it? And the best part is, there are no hunters. Only a bunch of big crabs on the east side of the island and a volcano. I'm gonna walk around for a bit, Crow. I'll just stay here and preen myself, thank you very much. What can you tell me about the island, Crow? Only what I've been able to see from above. There's a volcano, dead I think, and lots of jungle, and some nice beaches. I'd like to explore the jungle, but I'm afraid I'm gonna get lost. Any ideas? Well, I could stay airborne and keep track of where you are, that way I could direct you if... Sorry, when you get lost? Sounds like a super plan, Crow. Let's go. The rumbling is much fiercer here, and the ground is really shaking. It's definitely seismic. It has got to be emanating from this volcanic mountain. I mean, it looks dead, but it must be about to wake up or erupt or something. Great! After surviving a shipwreck, being kidnapped by fishes, and learning to breathe in water, I'm about to die in a volcanic eruption? Isn't that ironic? It's a keyhole. It's a small, eye-sized aperture with a crystal in it, like a lens. Maybe some kind of telescope? I can see a statue on a cliff overlooking the sea. I don't see anything interesting. I don't see anything interesting. I don't see anything interesting. It's a statue just below a really tall tree. I don't see anything interesting. Somebody's looking back at me. Oh, wait, that's just my eye. The lens is turned into a mirror. One mother of a tree. It's got to be at least a hundred meters tall. And what's that in the tree crown? Looks like a man-made construction.
Who's there? Duh. Shut up. I know there's somebody there. I heard you. Is she gone? Nope. She's still around. Shut up, shut up, shut up. If you won't come out, I'll just sit down here and wait. Sooner or later, you'll have to show yourself. Solar Eclipse! Oh my god! Ah! I hate this place. I so hate it, I can't even sit down without crushing the natives. Big person alert! This is too freaky. You don't think it's freaky? What about us? There's a large human stumbling around on her lumpy, wobbly legs. That's what we proper sized folks call a natural disaster. Watch it. Nobody calls me large or lumpy to my face. Big bones, then. You're a bulldozer with a brain, lady. You're an accident waiting to happen. At least to us stick men. What's a stick man? An unlucky bugger doomed to a miserable life of stiff backs and monotonous drudgery in the shadow of a mother tree. Happy little fella, ain't ya? You have no idea. So, you guys are stick men? That's right. I'm Wick. This is Willow. And that dumb looking one over there is Woody. And this is our mother tree. What's a mother tree? What do you mean, what's a mother tree? It's a mother tree. How difficult can it be? It's our mother, and it's a tree. It's a mother tree. What do stickmen do? What do we do? What do we do? What do you mean, what do we do? Well, the people in this world always do something. Like the Banda dug tunnels in the earth. The Marum killed Snapjaw and covered their houses with Tan Yen. You gotta do something. Hey, it ain't easy being a stick, let me tell you. You got your stiff back and limbs. Your fear of fire and water. Your 300 years of miserable boredom. And then you have to get planted and raise a family. It ain't easy. So, you're not doing anything worthwhile then. Lady, I'm miserable. I'm grumpy. And I got a headache. What do you want from me? Where do the Alation live? The Alation? The guys with wings? Up in the volcano. There's an old city in there. I think they're squatting. How do I get into the volcano? You don't. The road collapsed a few centuries ago. And when traders come, the Alation fly down to meet them. Nobody goes up there anymore. What's that constant rumbling noise? Lady, you have no idea what we have to endure. All day, all night, that noise is just murder. It all started when Kwaman, the quiet giant, would you believe that's what we used to call him, was banished by the Orowal from his perfect fishing place to some remote place in the forest. Whoa, information overload. Let's step back for a minute to fill in the details. Who's Kwaman the Quiet Giant? He's the scariest human we've ever seen. He stands tall as a mountain and uses whole trees for toothpicks. But he was the quiet type and reasonably gentle for a human. He'd spend his days out by the Olawal village, catching fish and frying fish and eating fish, and looking out across the ocean, dreaming about loose women or whatnot. What happened to get the quiet giant banished from that place? The Olawal got scared when he accidentally stepped on one of their young ones. He didn't do any real harm, but they banished him from their village nonetheless and told him to go far into the forest. Who are the Orlowal? They're the crab-like creatures who live down by the sea. Ah, they're nice people, if a little crabby. And it's hard to understand what they're saying half the time. 
Where's Kwama now? Somewhere in the forest east of here. We don't know where exactly. He went there to get as far away from the Aura Wall as possible. So what does all this have to do with the rumbling noise? Oh, I was getting to that. If you just let me get a word in edgewise. I just had some questions is all. Anyway, Guaman is the brooding type. And he takes everything so to heart, he got instantly depressed and went to sleep. And what is he doing now? Still sleeping. That's the problem. But how long ago was it that the Orlawal banished him? The last full moon. Nearly 30 sunsets passed. He's been sleeping for a month? He was depressed. What do you want, lady? Once I got so miserable, I slept for eight years. And let me tell you, those eight years were the happiest of my life. I still don't understand what this has to do with the rumbling noise. See that statue over there? Sure. What's up with that? Back when the Dalmari lived on this island ages ago, they put these statues up all around the island so that they could speak with each other. You're kidding. So they're, like, telephones? Tell her what? I don't know what that is. The thing is, these statues are all connected through magic. And when you speak into one, your voice flies through the air and comes out of another statue. But I still don't understand... You saw the big head up by the mountain? Yes. That's the one they use to talk to everyone on the island, to warn people of storms or to hold evening prayer. It's connected to the statues as well. And Kwaman is sleeping right next to a statue's ear. I get it. Resonance. He's snoring and the deep bass reverberating through the loudspeaker, the big head, causes a resonance that vibrates the entire island. But can't you just wake him up? We don't know where he is. We're not much for exploring this forest. There's water and fire and monkeys. Monkeys like to play with sticks. We don't like monkeys. But can't you just, well, send your voice to his tele... statue to wake him up? There are four problems with that. Number one, all the statues have an assigned symbol, an identifying mark, but we don't know which his is. Second, most of the statues are broken in some way or another. What do you mean? Some statues can only talk to certain other statues. Some can't be spoken to, and some can't hear, which makes it very difficult to get a connection through to where you want to send your voice. Number three, in order to use the statues, you need a key. We don't have it. We don't know where it is. And number four? We're stickmen, lady. What do you think? We don't know much about magic or magical devices. And, and... And what? Uh, we're not too smart, okay? There, I said it. We're not too smart. And when you look at Woody over there, who's pretty stupid by Stickman's standards, that's a pretty scary thought. Sorry I asked. triangular hole, like a keyhole. It's a creature with large ears. It's 
It's another one of those... Hello, I'm Woody. They call me the stupid one, cause I'm kinda slow, so don't let me keep you busy. I was born with a big brain, so I can't move as fast as my two brothers. I can only do useless stuff like calculations and design, and I play a few instruments, and I'm writing a book on the flora and fauna of Alaeus. Hi, I'm Willow. Wick's the oldest. Woody's the youngest. And I'm just stuck in the middle, as always. Don't let me keep you. Wick's the boss, as always. Go talk to him. Quaman? I'm Amy Lyon. And meet me, Quaman. But 
what you be doing up in the air, big woman. Big woman? Watch it, I don't... Oh, I see. It's just my voice that's big woman. I'm really quite average, size-wise. That be a secret. Quaman want to be left alone. Where are you, Quaman? That be a secret. Quaman want to be left alone. Could you please stop snoring? Quaman be snoring? No one ever tell Quaman he be snoring. But then Quaman always be sleeping by his lonesome. No woman like Quaman. Don't say that about yourself, Quaman. I'm sure that you know it's kind of uncomfortable to be discussing this in a public like this. Yes, everyone be hearing about Kwama now. You want to talk about your problems? Face to face? What be the point? I'm a good listener, and I'd like to be your friend. That'd be Quama, not sure if he want friend now. Please let me be your friend. Why? Because I'm old too. I don't know anybody on this island, and I need some help. Well, Quama be wanting to help, but. Okay, Kwamen be your friend and talk to you. My secret place be in the ruins of the old temple by the wells. Follow the stream up from the rock beach and go right where it branches. Thanks, Kwamen. I'll be there as soon as I can. It's another one of those statues come phone booths. They must have been popular in their time. That's Quammon, the not-so-quiet giant. It's a deep well with cold, brackish water and some seriously demented albino fish. Whoa! You are big! You're just about the biggest person I've ever met. Quaman be a freak. No one be liking him. I didn't mean it that way. I just meant... April, you know just what to say, don't you? I'm sorry. I like tall guys. Really, I do. You be the only one, then. Because no one else want anything to do with Quaman. How did you come to be on this island? That be a long story. Do you want Quaman to be telling you? Sure, I have time. Tell me the story. Many long moons ago, Quaman be happy. He be working at the Circa in Khorasan, where he be big attraction. What did you do? Quaman be the world's strongest man. He be popular. People come to see him from all the Northlands. Some even from east of the Bay of Fire.
But then there be an accident, and the circuit tell Quaman to leave, that he be dangerous, and that no one be paying to see him anymore. What kind of accident? Quaman's most popular feat be the breaking of large rocks with his fist. Everyone would applaud when the rock be breaking. Then one day, the Kala be at the Circa to see the performers. He be saying, Quaman, I hear of him breaking a large rock with his fist. This I want to see. But my performance be over that day, and there be no rock to break. So the Circa Ringmaster Obron, he be saying, Let's get a rock in here, any big rock at all. So they bring in this rock that Kwama never be crushing before. Kwama not be sure if it is a good idea, because rock can be dangerous when it breaks. But Obron be saying, this you must do. The Caliph wants to see. We do not disappoint the Caliph of Khorasan, or we lose our heads. So Kwama break the rock. And when it breaks... What... what happened? There'll be large pieces of rock flying everywhere. And one piece be hitting the Caliph and one his son. The Caliph be not seriously hurt, but his son be unconscious and bleeding from the head. They say to Kwaman, Run! Get away from the Circa and Khorasan, or the Caliph will have his head. So Kwaman run and he get passage on ship leaving that night. When the ship passed this island, Kwaman be jumping into sea and swimming ashore. And now he be here. What happened between you and the Orlawal? Oh, Kwaman be so clumsy, so dangerous. He should not be among people. He be only hurting them. The all the while be kind, letting Kwaman live and fish in their village. But then Kwaman be stepping over young all the while, almost breaking his shell. The all the while tell Kwaman to leave village, to not come back because he may kill an all the while. They tell him to go as far away as possible. Kwaman be sad because he liked the Olawal and because Kwaman be having the best fishing place in all of Elias. He loses his friends and his food. What do you eat now? Kwaman fish in these wells here, but the fish that live down there be small and not very tasty. Would you like to move back to the Orlawal village? Oh, yes. Kwaman be wishing that more than anything in the world. I saw an Orlawal down by the beach, just outside the village. It seemed to be in pain, but I didn't know what to do. Perhaps if you come along, you can help him out and get back in favor with the Orlawal people. Yes, perhaps Kwaman can help, even if the Orlawal do not want him back. Here it is, the, uh, Orlawal. Can you help it? Perhaps Kwaman can help. Poor Orlawal. He'd be crying for help. Uh, Kwaman see what be wrong. The Orlawal not shed its shell when time come, and now it be stuck in the shell. Why didn't the other Orlawal come to its assistance? Their claws be no good for this work. They be helpless. But Kwaman help. Kwaman be good with his hands. Kwaman be happy. Kwaman accept your graceful thanks, sir. Thank you. You be making Kwaman very happy. Kwaman accept your offer and be grateful to the Orlawal people. Thank you very much. What? What did he say? Why did you thank him? All a while be inviting Kwaman to stay on the cliff above the village, where he can fish again. Kwaman be very, 
very happy now. You understand what it's saying? All of all, language be easy to understand. It be just click and clack and clock. I'm so happy for you, Guaman. Go on, don't let me hold you back. Kwaman is fishing. Hey, Kwaman, how's the fish biting? With its teeth? But not today. Why's that? Kwaman be not certain. The fish always bite before, but then Kwaman be having lure. Now no lure, just bait. What do you need to make a lure? Kwaman can make lore with just anything, as long as it be colorful and not get heavy in water. You're a real DIY guy, don't you know? Always be something wrong with Kwaman. That was actually a compliment. Oh. What did you need to make a lure again? Anything, as long as it be colorful and not get heavy in water. Are you happy now, Kwaman? Kwaman be happy. He be wanting fish to bite. But if they do not, Kwaman still be happy. Can I borrow your fishing rod? Kwaman must catch fish first, so he can eat. After Kwaman catch fish, April can borrow fishing rod. Happy fishing. Thank you. Could this wrapper work as a lure? Yes. Yes, with some work. It'd be perfect for a lure. Now Kwaman can make one, and hopefully catch many fish. <laughs> 